Hey everybody, it's Eric, back on the Camaro again. Um, thank you everyone who responded to the fluids video. Um, I ended up deciding to pretty much just go old school on everything here, so standard uh, glycol coolant, dot three on the brake fluid. Um, I do have mobile one for the engine. Um, if anybody has a comment on that, that would be interesting. Um, GM does not work doesn't call for any special break-in oil or anything. They just say you just use normal synthetic. Um, anybody have any thoughts on that? Any GM crate motor, whether you need the break-in oil or not? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I can certainly get some if that helps. Uh, anywho, um, today um, I got the fan relay thing in, but it just came in the other day and we've been letting our packages disinfect for like a week before we touch anything. Uh, due to uh, the virus, um, so I'm not going to touch that today. Uh, we'll leave that. So I think I'm going to work on the brake lines today, um, as we talked about a little bit in the last videos. And these guys are hitting the inner fender well here on um, this front line. You can see is too far down. This one back here clears, but just by a hair. And the back one there required an adapter. You can see there. Um, to fit into the master cylinder and unfortunately that pushes it too far down to be able to get the brake line in. So I have some parts, hopefully I can find them all because I bought them a while ago. So I'm going to take this guy off, put a little temporary line in there, or a, it's a small line that I can then bridge these two with. Then I can move this connector to the end of that line and then just use the standard, what are these, quarter inch? I forget what the standard brake line size is, but um, we got to take this proportioning valve off. I think I mentioned before because I I cross threaded these when I put this in and I reamed them. I can't even speak today. I ran a tap through them, clean them up, um, but I'm going to take it apart again, make sure it's still okay because this second one here doesn't seat up as high as this one does. And so I'm worried it's not seating all the way in. So I'm going to take all this stuff off first um, and then see where we stand. Well, another one of those days that doesn't go right. So I bought this little pack of goodies here, um, which I thought were the right size. But these will not thread in. Um, if I thread this onto that adapter that I have, it's sloppy. It's, it's the right thread pitch, so it seems. But it's just too sloppy, so it's like, and this is a 10 millimeter, so these are metric somehow. Uh, back to the drawing board on that one. Um, although this line seems to fit, oddly enough. Maybe it's the same thing. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this to thread in here. So I chased these threads on this guy again. I think they might be okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that one fits. So this one at the back here didn't cross thread, so this one's okay, as far as I know. Yeah, that one fits okay. So I think this, this is okay. I want you guys take a look here and tell me what you think. It's going to focus on those. So the threads are a little chewed up, but I think they're all right. Um, the seat at the bottom on that one's a little messed up from trying to run the tap down in there. I don't have a bottoming tap. I only have a tapered tap. So I can't really get that far down in there without crashing into that. And I think this is okay, but you guys tell me what you think. Um, this guy looks like it's going to be okay, though, for what I need. So I can mock this thing up at least and try and figure it out. So the idea here is the brake line coming from the rear of the car is this size, which is half inch, I think, and we have to convert it down. Um, so, uh, yeah, so coming out of the car is gonna be like that with a male into this, and I was gonna get one of these unions here. Oh, sorry. It's hard to do this one, put this guy on here. All right, something like that. And then I can curl this to wherever it needs to be to get into the back of the proportioning valve. Um, so I'm gonna start with that, because I think this is the right piece. Um, I got a set of tubing benders specifically for this purpose, which are these really tight radius benders. 
um, to try and get this. I was experimenting with that to see how tight I could get it. Um, I haven't tried a full 90 on that, but I think I'll be able to get a full 90 out of that. Um, so let me play around with that and figure out how I want that to work and we'll go from there. All right, so we can get a, a 90 about like that, which is pretty good. Maybe an inch and a half from top to bottom. Uh, this is the front driver's side brake line. And that's the, the curve that I have in there. So if I can straighten this thing out and get that kind of similar bend, it'll be plenty fine. Um, I believe, look at the threads on this, see if these are destroyed. They're a little chewed up too. So I might have to replace this line too. Yeah, that's pretty bad. All right, so I'm gonna have to replace this guy. I'll have to look at the other line, see if it's okay. I'll just, so yeah, this is throw away here. At, well, I might be, no, I'm able to run a, t a die on this one and clean that up. But let me uh, see if I can bend this one. So I gotta straighten it out first and then bend it. All right, that's fairly straight. It doesn't need to be perfect, I don't think. Uh, we'll try and get a similar bend in this. Of course, that's going to put it in the wrong place, but then we can tweak this around a little bit. All right, so I tested putting the line in here, and it'll seat down just fine and lock the tube in place. This one does not, so when I torque it down all the way, I can still spin the, the brake hose in there. So this, this guy's beat for sure. And so i got to get a new proportioning valve. That one new brake line. Um, this guy here uh, that goes in the back, um, if we look at it this way, so the brake line from the car, the rear brake line comes up like this, somewhere around here. So it's got to make a, um, a big loop-de-loop -loop and end up back here. Um, so it's going to be sticking straight up here, and it's got to come back around and end up sticking straight up again. So if we go up, loop around and back. So make one loop basically. That should get us about where we want to be. So I probably didn't need that 90 degree bend there, but that's okay. So we'll do like 270 on the rest of this. We'll see where it ends up. I don't know, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's not gonna work either. So this comes up pretty high here and it's gotta get down there. So this this is just not long enough. Let's see if I can get a flex hose in here instead. Uh I think it'll be easier, you know, like a, a 10, 10 inch flex hose or something. I'm assuming they make a flex hose like this. Um, it'd be even easier if I can do a female to male, like an extension hose, and then I don't need this thing in here, and I'll be good to go. I don't need any of those fittings that don't fit, so that would actually be nice. So I'll take a look for that, see if I can find one of those. That'll make my life a little easier. I think it's kind of ugly sitting up in there, but if I put a flex hose on it, I might be able to tuck it up under here or something so uh so that didn't go the way that i wanted of course never do um so i'm stuck on that one let's see i got the clips in for this thing I got, i'm gonna again those haven't been sitting here long enough but i'll alcohol those off and then now uh, let's see how well those work get and the um wire braid i got more wire braid maybe just go back to electrical today so i had a heck of a time trying to find the uh, clips. I, I pulled these off my old wiring harness. I don't know where in the wiring harness they came from, but I had a few things like this that I think had mounts on them at one point. Like this one had something on there that broke off. Um, I couldn't find those, but I found these, which I'm hoping will work. So I'm hoping that will stick up through that hole there, and then this thing I can uh, wire tie to the the wire loom there, and hold it all together. I don't know what we're gonna see. Yeah, I think these things are gonna work. So I tucked it inside the wire loom there, so it, it's actually kind of stable already, but I think I'll put a, at least one tire, one wire tie on it, maybe two. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty flimsy actually. You can see how it just pops right out. Um, and get it in the right place, and that looks like it's gonna work. I don't wanna push it in there. Of course, I won't be able to get it back out, but. It looks like it's going to work. So let me try that. Put a couple of wire ties on and see how it goes up under there. Yep. Worked like a treat. That's awesome. And they've got this offset in them too, which pushes the, the wires under here. There's a bolt that comes through here on this one, which is a little goofy, but um, it'll push out of the way enough. You can see my finger sticking through there, so that'll be okay. Um, I don't know where all of these things go. Another one here. 
And I'll put these four in here so that I can put the, uh, the core support top panel back on and everything, get all this locked back down so it's not floating all over the place. Um, if anybody knows other style clips that you can get for these purposes, uh, post it in the comments, please. Um, you know, for other people's assistance as well as my own. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't give you a shot of that last one before I tucked it all up under there. So like so. I'll cut these guys off. Like so. Okay. Stick them under there. All right. Uh, and then these guys, I need to get some more wire braid on these guys and cover this stuff up here. Let me get on that. All right. There's the horns. I don't know that that tie is necessary right there. I might take it off. I think this thing's going to stay by itself. Um, this one I may have to move because I left it a little bit loose, uh, depending on how the horns end up in here, which I don't exactly know yet. I just ran it up to here where there's another wire tie on the harness. I could cut that off, I suppose. Um, but I can just tuck this inside the, the loom that goes across here and not worry about it. So, All right, here's where those two pieces join. You don't need to tape this up or anything. Can't see it anyway. Um, this guy hopefully will clip up in there nicely. And the horns are oops, kind of fell through there. Hopefully those will work. Um, oh, that came loose. Uh, that might might cause a problem there. But that's nice. It looks like you can get them back out without too much trouble. Good. Work at them a little bit to get both of the sides to come through. That's good. All right. So let's keep marching my way along here. All righty. So I took the suggestion of using wire ties on these things instead of tape. I don't really like the way it looks, but it certainly won't go anywhere because uh, the electrical tape will come loose over time. I, I know that. Um, but I can go back and fix those later if necessary. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, I gotta try and remember where everything goes here. Like I don't remember where the, the ground wire goes. Um, I still have to figure out a grounding strategy in here. So I have the negative post there connected to the body and the engine, so that's all grounded. Um, this is only grounded if it's connected through the bolt or something somewhere. Um, so I can either run another ground strap from the fender down to the battery post there, or I could pull one off the engine here, run it along the side and hook it up here somewhere or something. Um, I don't know. Let me see what you guys think. Um, this guy's got his ground here, so it's may not be as important for any of this stuff to be grounded as it is while well, the horns probably need ground. So yeah, there's going to need to be a good ground. Anyway, got to figure that out. But this looks pretty good. Um, let me go ahead and let's see. I'm going to tuck this under here behind the AC lines Try and figure out where, where that ground should go. I honestly don't know. Yeah, that looks great. You can't even see the wiring. You got to look really hard see it up under here. I haven't clipped it up in place there. Wait until I put the, the lighting in, in case I have to move that stuff around. But um, yeah, it looks pretty sweet. I'm digging it. Um, what else? Um, I got the side marker lights. I could install those if I felt like it. Um, oh, I remember one thing I wanted to ask about. Um, radiator overflow. or. Uh, so I have here the, the factory one, which won't quite go where it's supposed to, I don't believe, because of these hoses here. I'm not entirely sure I know where this goes, but I think it wants to be higher up than it is. Um, I think I can sort of put something like here. It may not be where it's supposed to go, but I can make it work. Um, or, um, if any of you guys know a good... Uh, aftermarket um, bottle that would go good in here. Um, I bought one from Summit or something, but it's too big. Um, it's it, it's a long cylindrical one about like that, but it's just too big. It won't fit in here anywhere. So I need something a little squattish to fit kind of right here. I've got the um, fan relays that are going here. I've got that EVAP canister that's got to go in here somewhere. Um, but I need some kind of radiator overflow here. Let's get a little scratched up there. Um, 
So if anybody's got any ideas on that, let me know. Uh, this is probably going to do it for today. Um, I think there's really anything else I can do right now. Uh, well, maybe I'll put the side marker lights in just for the heck of it. Why not? <laughs> I like them apples. Here's where the uh, uh, fender protectors were. It actually dug all the way down into the clear coat. This was painted in August. It's now January. And that clear still hasn't fully firmed up yet. I hope that'll buff out. Wow. That's kind of shocking. Okay. If you can see all of these things here that I'm looking at here. Gnarly. So put these on here to protect the fenders. <laughs> Not sure they're doing the right thing. So I'm going to take those off. I'm going to only put them on when I need them. Um, and keep moving them around so they don't sit in one place for too long. Anyway, let me get the side marker light. I got this thing from Camaro Central, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm confused on these things. They have a dark amber and a light amber. I'm not sure which is which. I got the light amber because um, it comes with the whole kit with all the backing plates and everything. So those look good. Uh, I just wiped this down with alcohol. That's why it looks all screwed up. Um, so let that dry for a minute. We'll stick one on right there. Now these do not come with the nuts that go on the back, but I have them in my master body kit. So that's good. All right, I stand corrected. It did come with the nuts that were just in the, the bottom container. These are actually nicer than the ones I have, I think. The more surface area. There's these. Anyway, got the one on. Um, not real happy with how that sits in there. It's a little sloppy up here in the front, but it looks pretty nice. Just the small things like that make it look more like of a car. It's cool. Let's see how the cabling works back here now. See that guy in the back. He's got this guy here. So that's going to sorry snap into there. Yeah, all good. All right, we'll do the uh, passenger side call of the day. And there we go. Well, good. So, when I mentioned about the light amber versus dark amber, and I'm not really sure what the difference is, but since I figured the paint was kind of dark, I'd go with a light and red. Um, go with a, the light amber so it wouldn't disappear in there as much. Now, for me, I may be weird, but you know, doing resto mod stuff on this, I like the original stuff from 77 in a lot of places because it's got the retro look and and you can get these uh, repops that look really nice. Um, so it gives you the flair of the old car, um, but it's still new. Um, so I like stuff like this. So and uh, the big bumpers and stuff, which I know some people aren't fans of, but um, that to me is resto mod versus just completely mod. Um, so I like to have some flavor of the old car on there. So that's why I went. That's why I like this stuff. Anywho, uh, that's gonna do it for today, everybody. Um, if you have any thoughts on anything, again, uh, that would be great to hear from you. Let me know, um, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. See ya.